powers of the world could only guess what existed in the uncharted west. Native Americans already called this land home, and other nations hoped for a wealth of natural riches and had staked competing claims. Britain to Canada and the Oregon country, Russia the Pacific Northwest, Spain the West and parts of the South, France, an immense tract called Louisiana. By sending an expedition into foreign land, Thomas Jefferson hoped to open the West up for the United States. In 1803, a surprise. Napoleon offered to sell the entire Louisiana territory. The U.S. quickly purchased it for $15 million, more than doubling the size of the nation. To cross this unknown land would be among the most ambitious and difficult journeys ever conceived. Clark wrote his journal. All in health and readiness to set out. Boats and everything complete with the necessary stores of provisions. Though not as much as I think necessary for the multitude of Indians through which we must pass. They pushed off upstream from St. Louis. Young American soldiers and French Canadian rivermen handpicked for strength and wilderness skills. Among them, a man named York, Clark's slave and companion since childhood. All were leaving their families behind for years. Their main mission was to find a water route to the Pacific and the Orient beyond. A long hoped for Northwest Passage. Lewis was a studious and solitary man. Under Jefferson, he had been trained to observe and record for science every new thing he saw. He spent hours exploring alone with his dog. unfamiliar territory, just collecting a specimen would be dangerous. Only two days out, Lewis had nearly lost his life, with a long journey still ahead. But a greater challenge they faced every day, the backbreaking work of moving tons of gear upriver against the full flood of the powerful, unpredictable Missouri. William Clark. The sergeant at the helm run under a bending tree and broke the mast. I am tormented with mosquitoes and ticks. Meriwether Lewis. The barge run foul three times today on logs. Happily, no injury was sustained, though the barge was in imminent danger. Passed a bad sandbar where our tow rope broke twice. A storm struck our boat, would have thrown her up on the sand island, and dashed to pieces in an instant. Not the party leaped out and kept her off. Some days they made only a few miles with more than 3,000. Clark was a practical and plain-spoken man. He usually commanded the men on the river. He kept records to make an accurate new map of the West. As they pushed up the Missouri toward present-day Omaha, Nebraska, they were deep into Indian lands. Traders and trappers had been up here, but no well-armed military party. Missouri Nation came to camp. 
Captain Lewis and myself sent them some roasted meat. In return, they sent us watermelons. Been up the greater part of last night, Sergeant Floyd, who is as bad as he can be. He expired, having said to me before his death that he was going away. We buried him with all the honors of war, much lamented. on into the heart of the Great Plains. The immense river, what is one of the fairest portions of the globe, nor do I believe that there is in this universe a similar extent of country. In this vast grassland, Lewis discovered new species, including animals that bark. Like little toy dogs, he wrote. They would be named prairie dogs.
come some 1,600 miles in five months, but ahead lay the long, bitter cold of winter on the northern prairie. Lewis and Clark hoped to stay near the Mandan and Hidatsa, buffalo hunters who were often visited by traders. The tribes welcomed them as friends, and the Mandan called them Moshi, the pretty people. Together, their five villages were home to some 4,000 people, more than lived in St. Louis at the time. Nearby, the expedition settled in for five months of bone-chilling cold. The thermometer stood at 45 degrees below zero. It snowed all day. The ice ran thick, air cold. Three men frostbitten, bad luck. Captains knew almost nothing about the land of the West. They hired an interpreter, a French fur trader named Charbonneau. He had two young Shoshone wives captured by the Hadatse in a raid. The captains asked him to bring one along to help interpret on the trip. She was about 16 years old and pregnant. The Hadatse called her Sagagawea. Tribal leaders such as Black Cat told them of a chain of mountains far to the west could be crossed in half a day. They would need horses. Sagagawea's tribe, the Shoshone, would have horses and might help. In winter quarters, they called Fort Mandan. The captains prepared a shipment for President Jefferson to be taken back down the river by some of the men in spring. Clark drew a map of the land while Lewis packed what he had collected, including dozens of new plant and animal species. Zagagawea gave birth in February difficult labor assisted by Lewis. Tiny Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau became the final member of the expedition. We were now about to penetrate a country in which the foot of civilized man had never trodden. The good or evil it had in store for us was yet to determine. I could but esteem this moment of my departure among the most happy of my life. Sagagawea quickly grew more important to the expedition. She showed them edible plants and roots, white apples, wild artichoke, 